Welcome again, everyone, to another edition of Conrad Rocks or Coffee with Conrad. This is September 25th, the year of our Lord Jesus Christ. I believe it's the 25th. It is, isn't it? Let me check the date. <laughs> um, anyway, a lot's going on. I'm a little bit tired. I couldn't sleep last night, which is not your fault. Uh, apparently, there was some guy talking on the Senate floor called De Ted Cruz. <laughs> Just talk, trying to filibuster the... Uh, the Obamacare beer, de beer, Obamacare bill, defund Obamacare, and uh, I, I watched it a little bit. Um, I, I don't have TV, so I watched it through CNN. Uh, and I just wanted to see what it was. And uh, anyway, so Susan was staying up. She was like all into that. But anyway, he, he did something interesting. He did read the Bible and talk about Dr. Seuss, and I thought that was pretty cool. All right. I have a testimony from yesterday that I wanted to uh, to share with you. Now, during I'm doing the show live on Blog Talk Radio. I do that live, but I also do a, a video stream. In this video stream, if you watch it on YouTube, you know most radical man ever on YouTube, um, you'll find out that I put a little, you know, I put some graphics in. I might throw in a, a transition clip and and so forth, and I may act a little silly in the video cam at times. But um, I go for a walk after this renders. You know, the video it will it will be rendering, and I'm like, uh, in other words, I'm converting the video into something that you can watch it into a watchable format, and then I upload it to YouTube. So it takes a while for Coffee with Conrad to hit YouTube. But And during that time, which is anywhere from like 30 minutes to an hour or whatever, you know, I do things like a pick up around the house, I do some chores or whatever. Sometimes if there's not much to do, I'll go for a walk. I go for a prayer walk. And yesterday, I went for my normal prayer walk. Um, you know, I'm just sitting there, I'm being receptive, I'm listening to the things of the Spirit, man. And when you walk in the Spirit, dude, I'm going to tell you something. Um... When the Spirit of Christ dwells within you, things happen. If you remember, wherever Jesus was, there was always something going on, man. I've, I've been, like, in a car or on a bus, and I've seen, like, uh, demon-possessed homeless people just look up and watch me. And I'm not the only person. I'm just, like, going, wow. You know, they go, you know how they went up to Jesus, like, I know who you are. You're the Holy One, the Son of God. So, anyway, I'm just saying that, that when you are when you walk in the Spirit, weird weird things happen. So... I'm walking like I normally do past these these dogs, and they're pit bulls, pit bulls. And, you know, there's no fence, and, you know, I guess somebody's probably going to complain eventually because this was a dangerous situation. But uh, I'm walking down the street, and these pit bulls that I know were there, they're rawr, barking like, you know, demonically possessed pit bulls. <laughs> And anyway, so I think nothing of it. I'm praying, you know, I'm praying my warfare, that my Lord's a shield about me and all that stuff. And I, I'm walking the other way and I'm coming back and I'm thinking, you know, I got to walk past those dogs again. So I look at them and they're going nuts, you know, they're just going crazy. And um, anyway, this time I hear something snap. And then I hear the pitter patter of demonically possessed pit bull feet going, and I'm like going, oh my God, this thing got off and he's coming towards me and these are full grown pit bulls only one of them broke off okay and here's what happened in my spirit here's what happened um i had this thought and you think quicker than words can form you think quicker than words can form and this thought came into my mind it's like if you're going to have faith at any point in your life Right now is the time to have faith. Because if you don't, this put bull is going to eat you up. And I, I had these thoughts. I can't fight it with my bare hands. You know, so simultaneously, during this thought, during this thought, I simultaneously realized that I can't fight it with my bare hands. And I looked for a stick or a stone and this was all happening, and this, this thing was traveling fast. There's no way I could outrun it or anything. And uh, anyway, you know how David, he ran towards Goliath. 
<laughs> so somehow all these thoughts of faith, and I felt something from my belly. You know how we're always talking about how you think up here the mind is your, uh, it's the engine of the soul. We can cause it to think. You know, that's why Paul says meditate on these things. We can cause our mind to concentrate on things. And then as a man thinketh in his heart, but there, so is he. So that's our, our heart thinking. But something came up from the pit of my stomach. It was like a wave coming up, a wave of faith. And I, I don't know. I agreed congruently. I agreed up here and in my heart and in my spirit to have faith. And there's something about um, in the name of Jesus. A lot of people think that that's a tagline. It's a tagline, like whatever you ask in Jesus' name. Like, oh, I asked this in the name of Jesus. No, man. Watch my video, Taking the Name of the Lord in Vain. Taking the Name of the Lord in Vain. It's name is onome it means in the nature character and authority of jesus christ it doesn't you know it doesn't mean merely say being an atheist and saying in the name of jesus okay that would be taking the lord's name in vain um when people put their hand on the bible and swear to god almighty that they'll uphold and defend the constitution and then turn around and shred it they're taking the name of the lord in vain so what happens is in the name of Jesus, I, I like I'm thinking in the name, you know, I'm going to do this. And I took a, a, a step towards this dog as he was running towards me. And I said one word, you know how it says in the Bible, Jesus cast him out with a word. He didn't say whole, it didn't say full sentences. You know, Jesus didn't do too much conversations with demon possessed people. I mean, he might have talked to, he might have asked the guy with the legion, what's your name? You know, uh, but he basically says they were cast out with a word. So I said, back. And at the time, it, it, this, this dog was in the air coming at me. He was in the air, and it's like he hit this invisible wall, and he fell down. It's, it's like a, it was like a cartoon. <laughs> and I'm sitting here, I'm like, you know, part of me is like, there's a small part of me like going, man, I can't believe that worked. <laughs> Like, I can't believe we prayed all night, and Peter's actually out of jail, and he's at the front door. You know, it's amazing when you see God actually perform a miracle. You know what I mean? So anyway, um, this dog, he comes down. It's like he jumps up, comes, and then he falls down. And he had this confused look on his face, and part of me wanted to laugh. I'm like, oh, wow. But he was still, he was still a terror. So I turned to my right. And I'm like, I'm going to continue to walk. And then I started getting scared a little bit. I had to keep, I had, the Lord hasn't given me a spirit of fear, but of love and a power and a sound mind. And I realized that that fear, fear is forget everything and run. F-E-A-R, forget everything and run. But the fear is the opposite of faith. So what I did, you know, courage is fear that said its prayers. So I, I continued to pray. I continued to pray and I continued to thank God. I said, thank you, Lord, that you are a shield about me. You're my glory. You're the lifter of my head. Thank you, Lord, that like Job, you're a hedge. Nothing, Satan can't touch me because, you know, except you lift your finger. You know what I mean? So I was doing that. Um, yeah, here it is. I put it on Facebook. Um, anyway, there it is for my video audience. I had 25 comments. Um, <laughs> some of them were kind of stupid. But, yeah, that's what happened to me yesterday. And I just wanted to praise God for that, um, because if it wasn't for God, who knows where I would be right now. Now, enough about me. Let's talk about what I found in the news. Now, you guys, if you want to submit to me some news articles, the best way to do that, if you want me to maybe talk about the news with Coffee with Conrad, and I talk about things in current events from a Christian perspective, um, probably a more radical Christian perspective than what you're used to, and I'm heavily slanted into the prophetic, but go ahead and send me the news articles that you're interested in to Most Radical Man on Twitter. Most Radical Man on Twitter. Also, my page, my Facebook page, Conrad Rocks, go ahead and give it a like over there. I got 58 likes in a day or something, so that, that rocks, praise God. Now, here's what I found in the news. I put my stuff in, in, in pocket. And I did have a prison mentor sent me something that led me to this, this article here. And I may seem like I'm on a, 
a, a, a bandwagon, which I don't want to exaggerate. Um, I'm trying to shine a light on the fact that there are there is a fundamental principality problem in America. America is not going to be changed with political uh, political reform. Okay, in other words, just putting different people in office, it's not going to change. They're still going to do their politics. They don't care what the people say. Yes, listen to Ted Cruz last night. He's like, hey, we're not listening to the people. We're not. We vote them in. They, they run over us with health care reform. Nobody wants it. Uh, they run over us with the bailout of 2008. They run over us with the seatbelt laws, which, you know, if you remember, if you've ever read the Declaration of Independence, you know, among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And to secure these rights of life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, governments are instituted among men. So anyway, you know, that's not what's happening. Um, and I just wanted to point that out. They're just not listening to the people. Now, I, I have been shining a light a lot on the Islam thing, the Islam attacking Christians. Well, keep in mind, when I'm doing that, I'm not doing it from a, a, a carnal, up here perspective. There's principalities, and if you look at the principality in Islam and everything, you can trace it back to the Ishmael prophecy in Genesis, okay? Um, and, and also, let's see, it was Jacob and Esau. I mean, you can read these things. I know that Muhammad didn't come around until 600 A.D., but uh, there are some. The principality's always been there, and now he's trying to take root in all over the world. So we're going to talk about a couple of things. I'm just going to shine a light on a couple of things here, just to show you the fruit, and then we're going to talk a little bit about the root. Okay, we're going to talk about the fruit that we see. Now, I'm getting tired of talking about it. Um, here we go. We're black flags of jihad flying over NYC's Muslim Day Parade. I got. This was brought to my attention by Prison Mentor in Twitter, Prison Mentor on Twitter, and uh, I went. I wanted to verify it because it seemed a little bit too crazy to be true, and I found that it came from TheBlaze.com. Now, I'll probably lose a lot of my audience right here, but <clears throat> I was just verifying that this story is true, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. Okay, so if we don't use a megaphone, can we throw water bottles at the crowd? So what are you going to do if they throw water bottles at us? If that happens, then we'll take care of it. I think I think you don't really want to pursue the law unless it's going to happen to us. Now, were black flags of jihad flying over New York City's Muslim Day parade? Now, this is the the timing of this is interesting. Okay? As dozens of innocent victims were massacred and hundreds more injured during the Al-Shabaab's attack on a shopping mall in Kenya, you know, remember, it wasn't just Ke uh, Kenya, you know, that got attacked. Pakistan got attacked, too, um, where they reportedly let, let Muslims go and terrorize non-Muslims. Some handmade flags resembling the black fag flag of Isl Islamic Jihad were spotted flying around New York City, okay? America, you can look at this. It's on the blaze, and it's dated to uh, September 24th. Hold on one second. I'm going to verify today's date because, yes, today's the 25th. It's dated September 24th. Um, there it is. I'm going to put it in the show notes, and there's my video audience right there. Uh, so, you know, guys, there is a snake in the garden. And we let it in. In in the book of Job, it says, "Because I was at ease, America's been at ease. We sat there, we were getting fat in our Christianity, like the Laodicean church. You know, we got fat. We think we're rich. We think we don't need anything. We don't even think we need Jesus because we're fat." The best things in life are free, but you can give them to the birds and bees. I want money. That's what I want. Here we have, I'm going to read this one next, Change of Faith. Change of Faith. This is really interesting. Why young Brits turn from Christianity to Islam. <laughs> Anyway, so why young Brits turn from Christianity to Islam? Now, first off, um, this is dated September 18th. This is before the attacks and everything. 
Uh, I'm going to read a little bit about this and then we'll talk about it for a second. The UK's official religion is dwindling at a record speed with the decline of the church approaching rock bottom, experts warn. While Christian congregations age, most British mosques are bringing more and more young people on board. Public mosque services attract thousands of British Muslims, but when you check out a church, there are hardly a dozen participants at Sunday morning worship. Polly Boyko reports from London. The decline of churches in the UK is a long term. Uh, is long term now. It just happens to be approaching rock bottom. So 95% of people don't attend church on an average Sunday. Christian worship is already the concern of a tiny min minority of the people. Now I wanted to uh, shine a light on that. That you know, it's not just America. America kind of came out of England, basically. England, the lion, and then the lion had wings. Uh, there's a scripture. Uh, regarding that the wings were plucked and it stood up uh, uh, an image stood up as a man it was given a heart of a man or something like that i'm trying to remove that old testament prophecy but anyway where we're at here is both america and the uk are at ease <laughs> you know we've got wigglesworth finney all these people that came from these great nations are now you know it's it's we're at ease and Net to the next story, I have even one more story, and I'm looking at another fruit. Here's another fruit, and this happened in Oklahoma City, the, one of the hearts of the Bible Belt. Oklahoma City is not too far from uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, which is the Dodge City of Christianity, supposedly. You know what I'm saying? You got Rama, ORU, all that stuff, and this is what's happening in Oklahoma City now. You may not think, you may go, well, Conrad, why are you so alarmed? Well, I'll tell you why I'm alarmed. America's laying down and letting snakes in the garden. Okay? Um, this is from NewsOK.com by Carla Hinton, September 23rd. <laughs> September, this is recently, during these attacks. Now, these people didn't go to a mosque this time, but I did read an article recently of them taking kids to a mosque. Uh, young people donned headscarves and slipped off their shoes Sunday to enter the Sikh house of worship, most of them for the first time. They crowded into a sukkah built on the grounds of a Jewish temple and listened to a musician sing praise and worship at the altar of a Christian church. Now, I don't know if I pronounced everything correctly. About 190 youths and their adult advisors experienced the sight, sounds, and flavors of religious religions other than their own. At the 2013 Interfaith Youth Tour sponsored by the Oklahoma Conference of Churches, the youth toured the Temple Benai, Israel. Um, and uh, there he goes. Anyway, I'm going to put these articles. This is going to be in conradrocks.net today, the links to these articles so you can find them. And what I wanted to talk about regarding these articles Islam has taken over New York City. I mean, you know, there's a lot, that's what's going on. Oklahoma, which is close to the Dodge City of Christianity. Dearborn, Michigan is practically under sh Sharia law. If you'll notice, there's some videos on YouTube of Christians being stoned by Muslims and the police asking the Christians to leave. They can't exercise their free speech. They were basically saying, have, holding up a sign, Jesus saves, you know. So the Islam Islamists attack them. <laughs> okay, <laughs> So, and the police decide to take the side of the Muslims. So this is what's happening. America has let a snake in the garden. Now, on this on this article that says um, that people are converting from, the Brits are converting from Christianity to Islam, I'm going to tell you something. They're not. They're not. If you're converting from Christianity to Islam, you never knew Christ. <laughs> you never knew him. You cannot meet Christ. For instance, um, I'm always talking about Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9, Saul went about killing Christians. His name was Saul, and then he was Paul later, remember? Okay. He went around killing Christians, thinking he was doing so in the name of God. And then he goes, Who art thou, Lord? When he meets Christ... When he meets Christ in Acts chapter 9, he becomes changed. He's a different person. He's a new creature in Christ. Then he writes later on, he says, God is going to take vengeance on those that know not God. 
okay? These people that say they were Christians, I'm going to tell you one of the biggest abominations right now is the mental assent that Jesus is Lord. The mental assent. Um, that Jesus is Lord. This is a lie. This is, I mean, you know, we need to have a relationship. Matthew 7, 21, 23. I'm going to mention it again. Depart from me, for I never knew you. If you don't have a relationship with God, you never knew him. And this is going to be a scripture in Hebrews. I'm looking it up. It's Hebrews 6, 6. For my video audience, I'm taking a little bit of time. Okay. <clears throat> now, here we go. And this is the reason I say this. Hebrews 6, 4. For as touching those who were once enlightened and tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Spirit. Okay. This is a Christian. Okay. For as touching those who were once enlightened. Okay. And tasted of the heavenly gift. And were made partakers of the Holy Spirit. Okay, these type of people are not going to go to Islam, okay, and tasted the good work of God and the powers of the age to come, and then fall away. It's impossible to renew them again to repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put on him an open shame. I'm going to tell you, the sinner's prayer thing where you say a super, superstitious prayer, and then, um, oh my gosh, our director's name is Conrad, and he has a meeting with new hires called, you guessed it, Coffee with Conrad. <laughs> Sorry. You, Kyle, you're throwing me off here, dude, but that's pretty cool. Now, um, anyway, what I'm saying is once you know God, once you know God and you have a relationship with God, um, you're not going to convert to Islam. And I'm going to tell you another thing, too. This is very interesting. Have you ever noticed that you can't really have Bibles in the school? But here we go. We have a school taking children to an interfaith going to different face what they're doing this one nation under god well that god may be all up this is what politics are doing to americans they're you know when they swear to god on the bible when they put their hand on the bible they're lying they're taking the name of god in vain they're taking the name of the lord in vain and they're taking your children our children to other face you know what they should be doing and they're not allowing prayer in schools remember the whole problem with america go see the moral decline of america Moral Decline of America on my YouTube channel, you'll see that when they started kicking God out of the schools, um, you know, not allowing prayer and so forth, how America went to hell. <laughs> America went to hell. You know what's funny is we're sitting around, we're doing nothing. We're reacting to what these atheists and liberals are doing. We're reacting. They're taking charge. They're running out there and attacking the First Amendment. They're running out, you know, you can't have your religion. Your religion offends me. They're attacking it. They're running out there and attacking the right to bear arms. They are attacking it. All we do is sit here and have coffee with Conrad and just talk about it. We need to be proactive, okay? And like Gandhi said, a Hindu, I am quoting a Hindu, he read a lot about Christianity. He says things that, say, he says things that are pretty uh, moving, I love your Christ, but I don't like your Christians because they're nothing like your Christ. Amen? We need to be like Christ, and we need to take the ground back. We need to start doing our prayer walks in our neighborhoods like that dog attacking me yesterday. Hey, man, if, you truly protect, if you're truly in the kingdom of God, you will be protected. And guess what? If you're dead the next minute, you're in heaven. Amen? <laughs> so anyway... We need to start, the national repentance starts with the, the individual. We need to individually repent. We also need to take ground. We need to do our prayer walks. We need to start our Bible studies. And guess what? I'm going to tell you something else. We need to have apologetics. Apologetics. Most of you that heard this word, you don't even know. Most of my audience probably doesn't even know what apologetics means. There is a book. There are several books. Several books. It means defense of the faith. There are several books that which, which prove Christianity, which prove the Bible. In, like, for instance, one of them is uh, the signature of God. This book, um, this book, changed my life. Here it is on Amazon.com. Um, it was written in nineteen. 19- well, this, it was written before this. Um, 
It's the signature of God. Documented evidence that proves beyond doubt the Bible is the inspired word of God. I'm going to tell you people, when in 1995, when I was brought down to my knees, God, my life was, I was about to end things. I was on my knees and I said, God, I need to know. I need to know now. He put a desire in my heart to, you know, Psalm 37, 4. I delighted myself in the Lord my God, and he gave me the desires of my heart, and I just devoured everything Christian. This book here, The Signature of God, I'm going to put the link <laughs> in conradrocks.net today. You guys, read this. It's it's apologetics. And what it means, You you did you know that the Bible's 25% prophecy and it's 100% accurate? If you read the Messianic prophecies right there, what other what other religion has 100% prophecy? None. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? There's advanced scientific knowledge in the Bible. Um, Job talks about how he, he hangs the earth upon nothing and stretches out the north over an empty space. Talks about the absence of stars over the North Pole. I mean, come on, dude. I mean, we've got to start having apologetics in our churches and then in our schools. And then everybody will go, hey, wait a minute. Um, 90. Oh, man, I got to go, and I'm on a roll here. I got 90 seconds. I'm telling you, read this book, The Signature of God. Uh, it will, tran I mean, you know, it, it lit me on fire. I bought so many of these books, I started giving them away to people. Um, all right, so there it is. Let's see, what else did I want to talk about? Oh, yeah, you guys, uh, just so you know, China has lifted its Facebook ban for a little bit. Um, when I, I had a huge Chinese audience when I started when I started my uh, Conrad's Concerns, and they are hungry for the Word of God. So I'm going to tell you something. Go do your geographical searches for China. You know, you can do a Twitter search and find Christians over there and start communicating with them. While this door is open, we need to be effectual in our communication. We need to communicate Make disciples, make friends. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, I love you. Thank you for being in my life. Thank you for listening to Coffee with Conrad. Come in tomorrow. You can come into the chat room and bother me like, like Kyle did. Love you, Kyle, man. Thank you for being in my life. Till we meet again, dig deeper, go higher.